Welcome everyone to CenturyLink Field in Seattle, Washington as we have this divisional matchup between the Arizona Cardinals and the Seattle Seahawks playing for first place in the NFC West. Cardinals come in at 13-2 against the 14-1 Seahawks. The winner of this game will take the West Division crown. We're about to kick off as always with me in the booth is my partner David Roy. David, as we get ready to kick off here, how do you see this game unfolding? Well, I think the biggest concern that Arizona has to face is that they don't have Carson Palmer leading the way today. And that's going to go a long ways going forward as we'll see Blaine Gabbert taking the field. Talking to Arizona's organization earlier today, their biggest goal for them and for Gabbert is to get him into a rhythm early by targeting short underneath passes. Seattle, on the other hand, talking to them, they're not expecting to blitz a lot today because they've gotten pressure all season long without utilizing the blitz. We'll see if they can keep up that trend today. Getting pressure without a blitz is definitely a strategy that you want to be able to employ if you can. Dropping seven guys in the coverage is always beneficial, and Seattle's been able to do it so far. First play of the game, Gabbard is going to drop back pass. He's got time, and he's going to fire it. Over to the right, and that one is complete to Alonzo Russell for the first down. The Cardinals wearing their white uniforms with white numbers, which is kind of weird to see. It's kind of hard to see the numbers when they're out there on the field. And there they go. Okay, they actually got red. I guess on the sideline they're only wearing white numbers. On the Seattle side of the ball, they're wearing their neon green jerseys and socks with their blue pants, and they like their neon, and they're out in them tonight in front of the home crowd. Second and four here. Gabbert's going to turn around, fakes the handoff. There's a flag on the play. He's going to turn around and runs. And he dumps it off to Golden, who's going to catch, falls on the ground, and then finally he's knocked out of bounds. But I think this one is going to come back. Dorian Johnson is flagged with the holding call, and that's going to bring up a second and 14. So that play goes for not. Not a best way to start for the Cardinals getting the penalty on the second play of the game. On well, offensive struggles have always been an issue for Arizona. We've seen it kind of over the past season. And now David Johnson is really going to be counted on Seattle. They're going to lock him down, try to keep him bottled up as much as they can, force Blaine Gabbert to be the tool that Arizona uses to beat him. All right, second and 14 here. And there's another flag, as I think they got flagged for a false start. And we'll wait for the call. They don't actually give us the call, but they move back five yards, so that's going to be a second and 19 as the line got a little chippy. We talked about that pass rush, and the Cardinals line's trying to get a jump on them, and it cost them there. So second and 19, you have a backup quarterback, actually your third-string quarterback is your starting quarterback in this game of Carson Palmer going down with the shoulder tear, and now you're already in a second and 19. Definitely not the way the Cardinals want to start in this one. So they're going to turn around, hand it off to David Johnson. Goes out to the right, fights for some yards, tries to get up to the 20. And nowhere to really go. He's going to pick up a game of a couple, and that's going to bring up a long hit. Third and 17. So with the short run there and the, and the couple of penalties, you got a third and 17. You come out here passing, or do you just try to run the ball and play it safe and not get yourself in a hole early? I'd play it safe. The Seattle defense has 44 interceptions on the season. They're the number one defense in the league. Don't come out firing, especially with Blaine Gabbert, who you know is the third-string quarterback coming into this. At this point, you have to take the safe option, keep Gabbert's confidence high. He starts throwing interceptions. It's going to be a long day. Definitely do not want to get him off the so sorry. They're going to hand that one off to David Johnson. He gets a yard maybe before he is taken down there by Michael Bennett. So a six-yard net, net loss on that drive for the Cardinals, and they're going to have to punt it away from their own 20-yard line. Seattle's going to get great field position to start here in front of the home crowd. Andy Lee is back there to punt. He's going to kick this one deep, and that's a nice punt, almost an 80, or uh, actually 60-yard net punt. And nowhere to go there for the returner. That one is J.D. McKissick, one of the backup running backs to Eddie Lacy, as he goes nowhere pretty much on the return. So from the 35-yard line, is where Seattle's going to start. Pretty good field position, though, nonetheless, and that's where they will come out. Seattle, on the year, has kind of had an up-and-down year on offense. They are 17th in the league in total offense, but 7th in scoring. Part of that's come by the defense. And they'll come out here with Russell Wilson under center. He's going to turn around, hands that one off to the left, 
And down goes Thomas Rawls getting the first carry of the game. And a four-yard carry. Rawls, the second leading rusher on the team, 99 carries, 543 yards and four touchdowns. Eddie Lacy, as I mentioned, the leading rusher, 144 carries, 664 and 12 touchdowns. But they do have a three-rotation system with Lacey, Rawls, McKissick, so definitely expect to see all three of them. Second and six here from the 39, three minutes into the first quarter. Two tight ends, eye formation here. Russell Wilson's under center. We got Jimmy Graham coming in motion. He's going to toss that one to, to Lacey, who goes outside and picks up a few, and that's going to bring up a third down. In Arizona, you know, we talk about Seattle. They've got one of the, the best defense in the league, ranked number one. C Arizona, though, they've got a top ten defense as well. Talking to the Arizona organization coming in today, their biggest goal is to force Russell Wilson to beat them from the pocket. Went back, watched the Titans tape. This Arizona defense fell apart when Marcus Mariota was able to move around and use his legs. It's definitely their kryptonite. Definitely got to watch Russell Wilson here. They try to go with the screen on the outside, and it's complete, but good pursuit there by the Cardinals as Robert and Kimbici is over there to make the tackle for no gain, and both of these teams have to come out and punt on their first drive. So John Ryan back to punt for Seattle. He's going to kick this one kind of short. Patrick Peterson back there to return. He got nowhere to go. Puts on a juke. And then he runs into the waiting arms of Alex Amar Ama, the rookie out of West Georgia, uh, of all places. Not a place that, not a football powerhouse. He comes through, makes a tackle. And Blaine Gabber company are going to get to the start over here on their 28th, looking to make a better drive than they had the first go around. First and 10. Here, 7.36 to go in the first quarter turnarounds. Handed off to David Johnson. Tries to break free, but he is wrestled down there on the outside by Cliff Averill, a veteran out of Purdue. And one of the things that Seattle talked about, they said they were going to run a lot of man early on in this game. And so far, we've kind of seen that. They're going to force Blaine Gabbert to make good decisions and force it into really tight windows. We'll see if he's capable of pulling that off. Gabbert thrown in a tight window. It's not something you really want to do. Press coverage on the outside. This might not be a tight window. He's got to fit one into unless somebody gets open. He's got he's got protection. He throws over the middle, and it's not able to be caught as the tight end is not able to come down with it. That was Tony Nicholas, the tight end out of Notre Dame, not able to make the catch there. Had the space. Good throw there by Gabbert, and doesn't come away with the ball, so that's going to bring up a third and eight. You had the safety over the top. You had a small window. Gabbert gets that out a little bit earlier. Nicholas can hold on to that and pick up those that first down. The Gamer checking in on the chat. Welcome to the stream. Third and eight here for the Cardinals. And they get pressure off the edge. Black Gabbert just gets rid of it. Out to the right, and the completion's made. But nowhere to go there for Brenton Goldman, the wide receiver out of West Texas a and I don't know where the Cardinals find all of these guys that play that these uh, these random schools out there, but uh, not able to get anything going there. And we're gonna get another punt here from Andy Lee on fourth and five. That one's gonna go deep again. Nice punt inside the 15. That one's taken out to the 20. He tries to put a move on it and he's wrestled down as McKissick goes down again. So first and 10 from the 26. Better field position for the Cardinals defensively, worse for the Seahawks. And that's where they'll start on this drive. Citizen Chad, what is up? One of our followers on Twitter, been a long time follower. Appreciate you checking us out. Thanks for stopping by. I see Burns and Packer also checking into the chat. Appreciate you guys tuning in. First and 10 here for Russell Wilson. He drops back to pass. He's a scramble out to right. We talked about that earlier. He's got room to run, and he is down across the 35, and they're going to give him a first down down at the 37. So as you mentioned earlier, Cardinals defense struggles with mobile quarterbacks out of the pocket, and that happens right there. And one of the things that the Seattle organization talked about earlier today is that in the last time these two teams met, Doug Baldwin had a favorable matchup. Russell Wilson didn't notice it early on, and this organization has paid attention to it. Now they're looking to get that favorable matchup. Doug Baldwin had been matched up with a rookie corner. They want to take advantage of that today if they get that look again. First and 10 here for Wilson. He's going to throw that one down into the flat. Slips a tackle and finally taken down as... Amara Darbo, the rookie out of Michigan, comes down with that one. 
if Peyton's out there, uh, shout out to you, one of our, our probably most hardcore Michigan fan out there. I know he was a big fan of Darbo. So second and four coming up here for Arizona as a little check down there. Seattle kind of playing it safe, doing what we expect uh, the Cardinals to do, but Seahawks are doing the same thing early. Some shifting here from the Arizona defense. And time is running down. Snap, fake handoff here. And they're going to check down in the flat again as that one is complete. Out to the sideline before wrestled out by Patrick Peterson as Alex Am Amra, the West Georgia fullback, comes up and makes the, gr or makes the play for the first down. And the play action is what sets this play up. You have that release valve on the backside and the fullback. Take advantage of that. Plenty of space underneath. So you know that Arizona is expecting the deep ball of Seattle, and Seattle's not falling for it. Excuse me, that wasn't Amra. That was the Cardinals out of Amra. Uh, that fullback was just picked up by, by the Seahawks before the game. They didn't report it to the league. So we don't know who that is. The fullback, number 40 for Seattle, as it will be referred to for the rest of the evening. So a two-yard run there by McKissick, and that brings up a second and eight. Not a lot going on for either running game so far. And kind of expected as both of these defense come in. They're pretty good against the run. Seattle's defense comes in number one in everything against uh, run pass, scoring, and everything. 14th in the league. Actually, excuse me, 7th in the league pass defense, 12th against the run for the Cardinals defense. So second and eight here for Russell Wilson. Got the strong formation off to the right. And he drops back. He's got plenty of time. He fires to the left, and that one is incomplete and a flag on the play. And a defensive pass interference on Brandon Williams. But he looked like he was several yards away. Did you see pass interference on that, David? I, I didn't see it. I don't I don't like this call myself. That ball, in my opinion, that's a little too far out there for the receiver to make that grab. I don't like the call. I don't think it's a catchable pass. I, mean, I don't think it was catchable. And it didn't, didn't even look like the DB was close enough to make the penalty but they get one there and that's a big big penalty for Seattle so they're going to have the ball now at the Arizona 20 yard line turn around hand it off to McKissick on the outside nice block out there but nowhere to go and as the defense closes down Patrick Peterson down there to make the tackle along with Hassan Reddick the rookie out of Temple and on those kinds of runs, when you're trying to get outside like that, on a stretch run play, what you're really trying to do is you're actually letting the running back pick the holes for himself. On those kind of plays, he's keeping his eyes forward, looking for any possible cutback lanes. There he doesn't take it, sees the edge is set, gets out there, but these corners in Arizona, they know how to tackle and make a stop, and they do it there. Second and eight for Wilson. He's going to throw a little screen out to the flat, and Jimmy Graham has room to run and just falls down with the ball, and that's a three-yard loss. So what looked like a pretty nice play that caught Arizona over-pursuing on the defensive line winds up resulting in a negative play as Jimmy Graham falls to the ground third and 11. And you would think those kind of plays – you would want to set up later in the game when you've got this defense thinking one way. They come at it a little bit early, and it certainly looked effective to start out, but they can't come through with the big play. Third and 11 here, trips bunch out to the right. Wilson dropping back to pass, got plenty of time. He's going to fire it over to the right to the sideline, and it is run out of bounds by Amar Debo, and no first down. So that's going to bring it fourth and five, and the field goal unit's going to come on. And the last time these two teams faced, we, you know, it was a lot of field goals and a lot of big plays from defense. You know that this is something that is going to continue. Two top ten defenses. This Arizona offense is going to struggle. Whoever makes the most stops is going to win, not who makes the most plays. Dougie Fresh checking in in the chat and giving us a hard time. We know he loves the broadcast. He just likes to give us a hard time. He doesn't want to admit it. Really been for those that you don't know who he is. So there's a run on the outside on the return and nowhere to go as they are taken down at the 29. So that's where Arizona's going to start with their third possession of the game. Nothing going on the first two. What do they got to do differently here, David? 
Well, they took a shot downfield with Gabbert, and I think that is important to make Blaine Gabbert feel like you as an offensive coaching staff trust him to make those kind of throws down the field. In this situation, go off the play action. They've run it the past couple of times on first down. You have the play action. Gabbert nowhere to go, and he is taken down by Michael Bennett, who comes off the edge. We saw Bennett make a tackle for loss earlier in the game. And a third down, and he comes up with one there. And that's going to bring up seven, second and 15. And they just cannot get anything going early on in these drives. Bennett comes off there. They have some short gains. They've had some penalties. Arizona playing for a division championship comes into the game at 13-2, and two, and they are not looking like a 13-2 and two team. But that's one of those things that can happen when you lose your star quarterback. So second and 15 here for Gabbert. They got a strong formation to the left. Twin receivers to the right. And Gabbert's just going to turn around and hand that one off to Andre Ellison. Who breaks one tackle and nowhere to go. And as a pursuit, it gets to him, and he has wrestled down in the backfield. Can't tell exactly the number. I think it was Deshaun Sheed who came in with the tackle. Portland State, another one of these small-town college guys making a name for himself here on PX1 Sports. And one of the things we talked about, and I spoke with the Arizona coaching staff in this organization, they really like this young running back that they have in Teron Ward. And in talking to them, they planned on using him in a lot of heavy sets, a lot of short yardage situation, but they haven't been able to come up with those short yardage situations. They're forced Gabbard into a lot of third and long, and he's got to be able to convert in these situations. Third and 17, and the going to drop everybody in the coverage, and Gabbard's just going to try to run for the sideline, pick up some yards, play field position, smart move there, as he gets wrestled down out of bounds, and there's no flag. Where is the unnecessary roughness penalty when you need it? And a free first down for the Cardinals. They're not going to get it. And Seattle gets away with one there. That's going to bring us to the end of the first quarter as we have a 3-0 Seattle lead here from CenturyLink Field in Seattle. And I'm your play-by-play -play host, Mike Peters. Along with me, as always, is David Roy. So another failed drive. 3-3 three, three now. So they haven't even got a first down yet. Am I, am I wrong, David? No, you're absolutely not wrong. They haven't been able to convert... And this is a big credit to the Seattle defense to force Arizona into a lot of third and long situations to make those possible. And in talking to Seattle, they said that Blaine Gabbert has a lot more mobility than Carson Palmer. They'll have to account for that. There, Blaine Gabbert picks up seven yards, and if Arizona is going to be successful moving forward offensively, they're going to have to rely on Gabbert to make some plays out of the pocket like he did on that. Now they're going to even make some plays, but they're going to need them to convert. Definitely going to need some first downs. The rest of the defense is going to step up. First and ten here for Wilson. He's going to drop back the pass. Fires it over to the right. In the double coverage, Patrick Peterson in on the tackle as Darbo comes up with another reception. That's his third of the game. In Arizona, we know that they like to try and parade around themselves the no-fly zone. So far, though, Russell Wilson... 100% in terms of completions. They've got to figure out a way to force Russell Wilson to make mistakes. Something that they talked about was creating pressure and a lot of spies and contains for him. Oh, hand off to Eddie Lacy. Powers forward and drags him forward for the almost for the first down. As not able to be wrestled down there. As uh, excuse me. Oh, and Kimdichi was the one there who got drug forward. So. Big run there by Lacey gets it down to a third and two. You talk about Russell Wilson being accurate and being perfect on this drive, but that's not 100% true because he did have that one that he airmailed and they got lucky with the pass interference call. So they have made him make one mistake. They just got bailed out by the refs. Third and two here, though. Empty backfield. It looks like Arizona's bringing the pressure. Who's going to win this one? Can they pick up all the blitzers, or is somebody going to get free? They got them all picked up. He throws over the middle, and it's complete. Jimmy Graham out across the 40 and hold first down. Russell Wilson, 7 for 7. On the game. That's an interesting play call. You're third and short, and Eddie Lacy, who we have seen today and throughout the season, is a major power hammer tight back between the tackles the fact that they didn't try to go back to him there on third and short is interesting almost kind of reminds you of that super bowl debacle when they had fourth and short and they tried to throw it there some things never die never change and never die in seattle we'll see if uh they make any more questionable play calls like that throughout the game well if it works out you're a genius it's only when it doesn't there's a completed pass over to the left and that catch
catch is made there by Doug Baldwin. He gets his first catch, eight yard gain, and that's going to bring up a second and two. Arizona, they have to, you know, we talk about the pressure. They haven't been able to do it despite bringing the blitz on an empty backfield for Wilson. Let's see them change it up. They talked about trying to contain him, but he's making a lot of plays from the pocket. They've got to figure out something different. Maybe drop some more guys into coverage, force him to scramble. You've got to pick where do you want to lose and how do you want to lose these battles. Well, looks like they're coming out in a 4-6 defense here, trying to put some pressure on the run game. And then they don't get it. Big run up the middle before Deion Buchanan pops at Lacey. And that's going to be a first down run. Three carries, 14 yards for Lacey. Eddie Lacey, that power horse, we saw it in the Giants game. He may be a workhorse and a power back between the tackles, but he can light you up on the outside too. As surprising as that is, he's got a decent combination of speed and power. Almost looks like Marshawn Lynch is back in Seattle here, and that's what they wanted him to be when they brought him in. J.D. McKissick in the backfield here. He's going to throw it out to McKissick into the flat. Nowhere to go. Nice pursuit there. As the tackle is made for a one-yard loss, that is Tyron Tyvon Branch, excuse me, in on the play. So second and eleven coming up here. Eight twenty-six to go here in the second quarter. Three nothing. Seattle leaves. They're down to the twenty-six of Arizona, moving the ball down the field with short runs and short passes, just being a little bit more crisp. But Arizona can hold them. The field goals. They've got a chance as things go along. So second and 11 here for Wilson as he drops back pass, got more time. He fires out to the side and coverage was there by Peterson, but he overran it. Doug Baldwin comes down with the catch. And Russell Wilson 10 for 10 on the, get, on the day. And that's one of those things that you like about the comeback route is it gives you more separation between the wide receiver and the corner. And typically that ball is out as soon as you see your wide receiver plant. He gets his head around. Peterson has the coverage, but like you said, overshoots it, and now you're looking at a third and short instead of a third and long. Arizona has got to force Seattle to take shorter passes and shorter gains as opposed to these long chunk plays that they're getting here. Third and inches coming up. How does the volume sound now? Apparently we're having some audio issues, so let us know. We'll try to get it balanced out. Nothing changed, so it's kind of weird, but... It, nothing happened in a delay of game. That is a big, big plus for Arizona. Big mistake for Russell Wilson. Trying to make some adjustments at the line. and doesn't get him in in time, and they take the penalty. So that's going to be a third and five. And now Arizona gets a little bit of breathing room. Instead of third and inches where you kind of feel like your back's against a wall, it still is, but not as much. You have a little bit of breathing room and an opportunity to shut this offense down here. Third and five, and it's completed outside, but there's a flag on the play. Ode Abuse. <laughs> Man, these names and where are these players come from? I don't know. Comes up with the holding call. What a crucial penalty for Seattle as they are now in a third and 15. Went from third and inches to third and five, now third and 15. They are walking backwards, going the long way. And we talked earlier how Seattle got bailed out on the previous drive with that pass interference penalty. Now Arizona is getting bailed out by their own penalties. And now you have Arizona in a very fine situation for them from a defensive standpoint. Third and 15, take away as much deep as you can, force Seattle to go underneath and play the sticks. Third and 15 here coming up for Seattle. Russell Wilson in the shotgun pointing out. Directions to his team. He's got time. Good blocking. Throws it down the field and it's picked off. That one is picked off in the middle of the field. Hassan Reddick. He's got a little bit of room to run. And he is finally taken down at the 25. So we talked about early that Arizona needs big play from the defense. And the rookie out of Temple comes up with one there. And initially the crossing pattern by the tight end had actually gotten behind Reddick. Had enough space and separation. Russell Wilson didn't take the shot there. Instead, wants to go to the in route. And at that point, Reddick has gotten back to cover up for his mistake and is in perfect position to pick it. David Johnson gets the handoff here and nowhere to go. Looks like he got 
dragged down by a face mask, but no fall. And Nord going only a two yard gain. And that's going to bring up a second and eight. Only 15 yards of total offense for Arizona. And they've got to come up with something. They're obviously relying on David Johnson in the running game. And Seattle knows it. Seattle is trying to keep David Johnson bottled up as much as they can. They've been successful so far. And so far, Seattle has played their game plan and executed it perfectly. Second and eight coming up here. And they hand it off to Ward. They've got nowhere to go and it gets flipped around. And he picks up a few yards there. And that's going to bring up a third and six. So they're going to the running game here, trying not to pass it with Gabbert, but still nothing going on. And that's going to bring up a third and medium. Fourth straight drive. They haven't been able to get a first down so far. And they really like Teron Ward in Arizona. You saw it there. What looked like should have been a really short yardage. It still was, but he managed to pick up a couple of yards after contact. And now the pressure is back on Blaine Gabbert to convert here. You know, putting pressure on your young quarterback who's not super experienced is never a good thing. He's got plenty of plenty of time, and finally he's going to scramble, but good pursuit there by the Seattle defense, and nowhere to go. It looked like he had plenty of room to run for the first down, and the Seattle defense just reacted immediately and got to him before he could get the first down, and that's going to bring up another fourth down. Four straight drives without a first down for the Cardinals. And the nice thing about that is, is Seattle kept everything in front of them, forced Gabbert to move, took away the passing lanes, took away the receivers, and now as soon as Gabbert takes off, which Seattle knew about, they get to come up and make the stop short. Pissick fields that one inside the 30, able to get up to the 32. Good coverage there by Arizona, and that's going to bring up a first and 10. 4.47 to go here in the second quarter, still 3 to nothing. Seattle, Arizona's defense came up the pick on the last Seattle drive, but weren't able to do anything with it on offense. As we mentioned just a few minutes ago, four drives for Arizona and zero first downs. They definitely need to get things flipped around. Carson Palmer got injured a week ago and with a shoulder tear, and he's going to be out for a while. So Arizona playing for the division here and going to be in the playoffs either way without Palmer and the way the offense looks right now, that could be trouble. And there's a pass on the outside complete, but looks like he was out of bounds. Incomplete. Only the first official incompletion for Russell Wilson outside of the interception. That's going to bring up a second and ten. And we talk about Carson Palmer having the injury. At what point as an organization, if you're Arizona, do you start looking for a younger quarterback? Now, they bring in Blaine Gabbert, and they seem to like him. But if you go off of this half so far, he has not impressed anybody here today. Thomas Rawls taking it outside. Good blocking. Finally wrestled down by Dion Buchanan. Rawls with a second carry up to 11 yards rushing down. That's going to bring up a third and three from the Seattle 39-yard line. Third and short. You have an opportunity here to do one of two things. A short pass like a slant, maybe something in the flats, even a curl route or a hitch route. Or you can go back to your hammer running back in Eddie Lacy and just power your way forward between the tackles. Probably not a bad idea here. You got the lead. Arizona's offense can't do much. He threw a pick on the last drive. Why not turn around and hand it off to Eddie Lacy? He is in the backfield right now, and there's two tight ends out there, although Arizona's stacked in the middle of the box. And they do that exactly and nowhere to go as Dion Buchanan is able to run down and make the tackle for loss. It brings up a fourth down for Seattle, and they're going to have to punt. And Arizona's defense, give credit to them. They only gave up three points earlier, and now they have managed to really stifle and shut down the Seattle offense from the pick to now the stop on third down. But now the pressure goes back to the Arizona offense. They have got to scheme somebody open, whether it's David Johnson, whether you do something that makes Blaine Gabber comfortable, you have got to find a way to create rhythm and mobility on offense and start putting a drive together. you got to do something. The, the benefit is that your defense is playing well also. You definitely don't want to have turnover. So in that regard, you know, they're doing what they need to, but you definitely like to see some first downs. There's a play action pass. Plenty of time for Gabbard. He throws it outside looking for Larry Fitzgerald. And nothing doing. we got a man down on the field. And we don't know who it is, so we will get you an update 
As soon as we know, incomplete pass there. They tried to go a little bit downfield, went to the comeback. Gabbert just not have the arm and the accuracy to complete that one. And that's going to bring up a second and 10. Arizona at their own 24-yard line, fifth the drive of the game, looking for their first first down. Nicholas comes in motion, Johnson in the backfield. They're going to turn around, hand it off to Johnson, looks for a hole. Nowhere to go, and that hole closes up quickly as the Seattle defense is in there to swarm. Several players getting back there. Sheldon Richardson, a pickup in the offseason from the Jets, was one of the guys back there to make a tackle. Michael Bennett comes out here for a couple of series. He's a player who went down. They expect that he'll come back at some point in this game, but if I'm Arizona, I know that to some degree I have a little bit of breathing room because Bennett's not on the field for the time being. You have third and long. Blaine Gabbert missed the throw earlier. Let's see if he can rectify that mistake here. And Frank Clark's also out, so now they got their top two defensive ends out, so they only have Bennett going up there, but that doesn't matter as he comes off the edge, makes the play, and there's a fumble, and Avril was playing defensive end on that one in place of the injured Seattle Seahawks, and they get the sack and the fumble, and that's going to bring up a long fourth and 23. Arizona, obviously at this point, You've already lost Carson Palmer. You have got to be able to protect Blaine Gabbert. You cannot afford to go into the playoffs having lost two quarterbacks. And now, going forward, you have to consider what do you address in the offseason? Do you address the offensive line, or do you try and get a younger quarterback back there? Arizona's got a lot of decisions to make coming forward. Well, even if they keep Carson Palmer, I think they got to look at a better backup. Obviously, they don't feel confident in Drew Stanton. And so far, Gabbert's not the answer. So Carson Palmer's had injury history in his career. He's also a little bit older. So the quarterback's definitely something they probably got to look at. McKissick's going to take that from the 50. And out to the 45 before he is wrestled down there by Antoine Bethea. So first and 10, great field position here for Seattle. They're going to start off at the Arizona 45. And a first and 10 coming up. 153 to go. Arizona... You're going to have to place the D. You know, if they felt if they went into the half down three to nothing, they probably don't feel too bad about that. Six nothing's not huge, but uh, they probably don't want to fall any further back than that. Russell Wilson in the shotgun here got trips out to his right. And he's going to turn around, hands that one off, and nowhere to go. Now, Sujay Procise there with the run, only picks up two yards, and time is ticking down. So Seattle playing it a little bit conservatively. Even though they're probably not super concerned about the Arizona offense at this point, they figure they're probably going to try to run down the clock. If they get a field goal, cool. If they can get something in the end zone late, they just don't want to give Arizona any time. So second and eight, Wilson coming back out on the shotgun. Got McKissick to his right. Two receivers off to his left. Fakes the handoff to McKissick. Then tries to throw it out to the left, and that's a duck. That hits the ground like it got shot out of the air. I think he got pressure off the edge. Maybe he might have hit his arm as he was trying to throw that one, but that one falls forward, and that one came dangerously close to being fumbled, so Seattle escapes danger once again. And now, and to me in my mind, that's a bit of a questionable play call. If you're trying to play it a little bit conservatively, you know, you have a wide, res wide receiver screen on as your primary play call in that situation, I'd go to something else, something a little bit safer than something like that. Third and eight from the shotgun. Throwing it deep downfield and in the rain. Russell Wilson not able to get a grip on the deep pass as that one falls incomplete. And so not even a field goal out of this drive. They started at the 45, only able to get two yards. It was almost a foregone conclusion when the drive started. They'd be able to get at least three out of it. But Arizona's defense comes up big, forces them to punt. And even though they've been struggling, Arizona's offense will get one more shot here in the first half. And to me, that string of play calls felt very strange and very different in that respect. And they do go for the field goal. Now, I don't know if I like that call. You're going for a 60-yard field goal in the rain. Your quarterback's not able to get deep field passes accurately downfield. You go for the field goal. That one's way off the mark, and now you just gave Arizona great field position. They haven't been able to move the ball very well, but now they only need 15 yards to tie it. I don't know if I love that play call. It doesn't work out for Seattle. We'll see, though. Their defense has been locking down 
The offense, we'll see if Gabbert's able to do it. First and ten here, he's drops back pass, got plenty of time. Throws over the right, and it's picked off right to Bobby Wagner, his 11th interception on the season, and he is taken down at midfield. So Seattle looks like genius is there. As they come right out, Bobby Wagner, 11 interceptions for a linebacker. Not only is that a record from what we can find by a linebacker, but he's creeping up on the all-time interception record, which is 14, and he's a linebacker. That's just insane. Bobby Wagner having an incredible year. Seems to be a lock for Defensive Player of the Year and comes up with a big play there. And so far, this decision-making has been questionable. From Seattle's standpoint, you're in prime position where you can drive down the field. A couple of questionable play calls, including the field goal. Now, obviously, there the defense looks good. Blaine Gabbert, though, his tight end going up the seam on his right-hand side had a step or two in front. Gabbert sees that, puts it out there. That's a nice big chunk of first down or six points even. Yeah, he threw that right to Bobby Wagner. And you got to wonder, you know, with the rain out there and these neon green uniforms on the green AstroTurf, did it just, did it, were his eyes a little bit cloudy? Did he... Did the, the jersey blend into the field? Like, what happened there? He threw it right to Bobby Wagner, and apparently every other quarterback in the league has been doing it too. And uh, he picks one off there. So second and eight coming up here is ProSize, not able to go anywhere. Empty backfield. Bring the house if you're Arizona. They're pinching their line. They're only going to rush four. And they throw it off to the right. The corner round, it's complete to Jimmy Graham, but he's out of bounds. He's got those long strides there, and that long stride took him out of bounds. Not able to get the first down. Nice pass there by Wilson, but led him just a little bit too far out of bounds. So that's going to bring up a third and eight in Arizona. And it's coming close to yet another stop here on Seattle. Another shotgun formation here for Russell Wilson. Got precise in the backfield. Third and eight, 38 seconds to go. Wilson taking his time, making some adjustments at the line. And finally, looks like he might have something in Pete Carroll that says, all right, there's too much going on here. Definitely do not like what's going on. They're going to take a timeout. Not a waste of time out there. Make sure you get the good play. You need a first down, so if you don't get it, your timeouts aren't going to mean anything. Pete Carroll's been around for a while. He knows what he's doing. Wiley veteran as a coach. And we're going to try to get trips out to the left. Baldwin in the slot. He is not covered. If he is, it's probably Hassan Reddick who just makes a little step to the inside there. Plenty of time here. Russell Wilson's got room to run. He's going to throw it into double coverage. And that one is dangerous. As Tyvon Branch was over there, not able to come up with it. But Russell Wilson gets away with a dangerous decision. And there are two things I want to point out. Let's go back to that incomplete corner route. Early on in that and from that formation, you had C.J. Prosize in the bunch, released out into the flat, wide open for a period of time as the interior of this Arizona defense got caught up with the confusion of the routes coming across. The other thing that I want to say is Russell Wilson should have stepped up. Arizona's defense struggles with mobile quarterbacks, and right there was a golden opportunity to make Arizona pay for it once again. Yeah, definitely looking like I, I thought the same thing. I thought he had plenty of room to run. I thought he for sure he was going to take off up the middle and try to get the first down and probably would have put themselves a field goal range. They had the leg on the 60-yarder, just didn't make it accurately, but he tried to force it downfield, tried to go for the big play, and was very fortunate to come away with it. Either way, they wind up having to punt it, so it kind of worked out uh, net zero for him. But Arizona's going to take over at the 20-yard line here. And if I'm Arizona, I'm just running this ball, killing the clock, and going into the half down three but we'll see what they try to do they're gonna turn around hand it off to david johnson up the middle got room to run tries to put a move on takes a big hit as earl thomas comes in and after the big run arizona's gonna take a timeout they're not content now so let's clock run down we'll see this one could come back to bite them but uh, they did catch him playing defense there expecting them trying to go deep caught him on the run and now they're taking a timeout. I think they might be getting greedy here, but we'll see what happens. Gabbard has not shown any proficiency for passing here in the rain on the road. He comes out with an empty backfield. That's dangerous as well with this Seattle pass rush. First and 10. He steps up in the pocket. Come around the edge. Winds up getting a block. Completes it to Fitzgerald. Tries to put on a room. And he, or a move. He is, he is taken down by Cam Chancellor. And Arizona says, yeah, we're getting a little too close for comfort here. We're going to let this tick down. And we're going to go into the half. Seattle leads in a messy game here, three to nothing as we reach the half. What are your takeaways so far on the first half, David? Well, Gabbert has been a bit of 
questionable and a bit of a, a lot of a disappointment actually on that play on the crossing route to Fitzgerald he actually had an opportunity to dump it off a little bit earlier and Fitzgerald would have had some room to make some moves and possibly pick up a first down but the thing that I have to feel like Arizona has to look at going forward is their defense is playing solid which is something very important for playoff football they just need to figure out this offense. Now, David Johnson had a solid carry there. We'll see if he, if this Arizona offense can figure out more ways to get him going and make Blaine Gabbert comfortable. He's had to throw the ball downfield a lot and not a lot of underneath throws that they would have liked to have given him early on, like they said. Tyler Lockett took that one out of the end zone, back at the back line, nine yards deep, and wound up getting it out for 26. Russell Wilson rolling out there, looking for... The corner or the crossing route coming across and fires it incomplete. Russell Wilson very inaccurate on his deep throws. He's been very accurate on the short throws, but very inaccurate on the deep throws. And that one falls incomplete, so that's going to bring up a second and ten. And before we move on, I want to say uh, give a shout out to Jimmy Turplord and Dove, who just showed up in the chat. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Second and ten, three nothing. Seattle leads here in the third quarter. Wilson back pass, got plenty of time, moves around in the pocket, runs up to the right, and just gets rid of that one as the defense man broke free, and that one's completed to the nameless fullback, who was able to get almost a first down, third and inches coming up here for Seattle. Last time they were in third and inches, they got a series of penalties, a five-yard delay of game, and then a ten-yard hold, so we'll see if it turns out a little bit better for him here. And it's one of the things that has really surprised me is Seattle's aggressiveness that they've really come out with. They're letting Russell take shots down the field despite the three-point lead. And the other thing that surprised me on that last play is Russell Wilson had another opportunity there again to take off and run, either step up and do it or get to the outside and move, and he doesn't. I don't know if there's something wrong with him or they're trying to keep him healthy, but one out of the two. Eddie Lacy with the run up the middle. Rumbles forward across the 40-yard line, down to the 42. And they get the first down there, so they pick it up. Apparently, we did not shout out, shout out to Pat, who feels underappreciated in the chat. You've been in here for so long. I'm pretty sure I mentioned you early on. You must not have heard it in uh, your old age. Those years might be gone. So uh, I, I am sure I shouted you out earlier. Pay better attention, buddy. You know, just playing. We always appreciate everybody that tunes in. First and ten here for Seattle. They turn around, hand it off to Rawls, who goes up the middle before he is stood up and taken down. Three carries for 15 yards for Rawls. That's going to bring up a second and six. And this running game is something that Seattle has really thrived on, and I'm a bit surprised that they haven't tried to go to it more than what they already have. I'm also surprised that they haven't gotten Russell Wilson involved with it. Now, I understand that you want to keep your quarterback healthy going into the playoffs, but at the same time, let him flex his legs a little bit. Let him stay loose. Let him play his game. Just make sure he slides and make sure you uh, reinforce that as the game goes on. Jimmy Turplord says his TT escalated rather quickly. We don't need to know all about that, but thanks for sharing. With the second and six, Wilson going to drop back the pass, fires it over to the right, and that's picked off. Dino Buchanan comes up with the interception, and he takes it across midfield down to the 45. Another interception for Russell Wilson. And this is a battle of two defenses. They're just playing their hearts out. Neither one of these offenses can really get anything going. And now Arizona is in prime field position. Put together a drive put the ball in David Johnson's hand, take the load off Blaine Gabbert's shoulders, and make things easier for Gabbert. Let him throw underneath and not deep downfield. Let's see if they can pull that off here. Is outside to Ellington. He's got room to run on the outside. Fights forward, and he gets the first down across the 35, down to the 34. Big run, the longest play of the game so far for Arizona. 10-yard run. They've got 40 yards of offense. And we're in the third quarter, but finally they get something going there. Ellington with the big run on the outside. First and ten. Each team now with two takeaways also, as we're seeing on the stats. First and ten here from the 34. First time they're deep into the area of the field for Seattle. And Arizona going to try and capitalize. Shotgun for Gabbard, who rolls to his left. Going to look deep downfield, testing the defense, and it's complete. Larry Fitzgerald comes down with the possession catch and Gabbert's four for seven and down to the nine yard line is Arizona and all just like that they're threatening trying to capitalize on the turnover 
and a tight window throw by Gabbert. And it's things like that that Arizona saw in practice that made them feel comfortable in rolling Gabbert onto the field as a starter this week. We'll see if he can continue that throughout this game. Gabbert in the shotgun again, back to pass. Rolls to his right, senses the pressure beautifully. Got nowhere to go, he's just going to take a run. Then he throws it out of bounds, but he takes a big hit. And he goes down, but luckily it looks like he is okay. As Tyler Matikavich, another linebacker out of Temple. Uh, Hassan Radek on the other side, Matikavich on the Seattle side. He comes up, makes the hit, and Gabbert wisely throws it out of bounds, and he's okay. And it, on that play, as you come out of the pocket and you have your eyes downfield, you can see that Seattle had pretty much everything taken away. Just get rid of it sooner. Don't take that kind of a hit. Center here for Gabbert, pushing around, handing off to David Johnson, down to the five, so a four-yard run. Johnson only seven carries for 21 yards. That could definitely be part of the struggles for the Arizona offense, but they are clicking on this one. They've got their first two first downs of the game on this drive, and they got a third and goal here from the five. Worst-case scenario, assuming they don't turn the ball over. Let's not look that worst case, but even if they don't get the first down, they should get the field goal, at least get a tie game which Seattle's got some pressure on them already, not doing a whole lot. Get a tie game, they don't have comfort in the lead. Who knows? So third and goal here for Gabbard. He's under center. Got David Johnson in the backfield. He's trying to get him drop off sides. Nothing doing. Hand it off. Johnson goes up the middle. Fights forward and into the end zone. David Johnson runs him over. Runs over Cam Chancellor and Michael Bennett. Gets the touchdown. And Arizona, who has struggled this entire game, puts together one great drive, and they are up 7-3. to three. And right there... They go to the man who they believe could carry them their way. This workhorse in David Johnson comes through when they needed him to. And now the pressure goes back to Seattle. Now they have to drive back down the field against an Arizona defense that has been very good today. We'll see if they can because now the division, what we thought would have been a sealed deal for Seattle, now it hangs in the balance. We thought it would be a sealed deal with Carson Palmer out, but not so much. That Arizona defense is playing well. As Tyler Knock Lockett not able to go anywhere, takes another deep one out and only gets to the 20. So he's trying to make something happen. The offense ain't not able to do anything. Lockett trying to make something happen, but he's actually cost his team five yards of field possession on that one. So first and 10 here from the 20. Seattle struggling. Looked okay early on. We're going with the short game. Now they're trying to take passes deep. It's just not working out for him, David. And they need to go back to their roots and to their play style. Hammer the ball, set up play action, passes underneath, those kind of plays that Seattle really lives off of and makes their bread and butter off of. Those will set up your plays downfield. Instead, they really didn't give it enough time to build that, and now they're just taking shots downfield. Well, they do go back to their roots. They hand it off to Eddie Lacy. He's able to go up the middle, gets three yards on the play, so that's going to bring up a second and three. If they get that running game going in the short pass game like it was early on, now granted they only got three points out of it, but it's three more than they've got in their other drive subsequently, and they've also turned the ball over twice, so we'll see if they make the adjustment. Turn around, hand it off to McKissick, who's not able to go anywhere. He does wrestle forward and gets close to a first down, but they're going to call him short at the 29-yard line. That's going to bring up a third and one. Had mixed results so far for Seattle on third and one. They've had some penalties on one drive, and then they ran it up the middle for a first down on their last third and one. We'll see what they do here. Is it going to be uh, two for three or one for three? We'll find out here in just a second. Uh, Seattle's taking their time trying to come up with the play call. 13 seconds on the play clock. they got two tight ends out there in the shotgun and McKissick in the backfield. Arizona bringing everybody up to the line, expecting to run up the middle. They get one. McKissick cuts it outside, and he gets the first down and a little bit more. Out to the 37, and there's an injury on the play. You know, camera crew not doing a good job of showing us who's getting injured. But uh, first and 10 here for Seattle as they convert second time on third and one, and they're finally moving the ball. And now these kind of run plays set up what Seattle was trying to do earlier, and that's take those shots down the field. But now with this running game, it sets up play action, and it makes things a lot easier for Russell Wilson. Looks like Arizona blitzing off the right. We got two tight ends out there. See if they change the protection. First and ten. They bring five. They pick it up and fires it over the middle. And it's incomplete. Amara Debo. That was a perfect pass for Wilson. 
And De Darbo had to extend a little bit to make the catch. Maybe the wet gloves got him, but he drops the pass. And Russell Wilson shaking his head, not happy. Thought they had a 20-yard hookup. And it's going to be second and 10. And that's not a bad read. You saw Darbo coming off that cut for the post. Got some separation. He can pull that in. It's a big chunky yard. Makes a move. And now he's into the end zone for six. That time can't pull it in. Now he did have the check down over to the right. The running back doesn't take it. Wants to take those shots downfield. We'll see uh, if he changes his mind about that going forward. Thomas Rawls in the backfield. They're going to give him the toss. He gets outside. Nice block on the outside. But Tyvon Branch comes up and pops him and forces him out of bounds. Luke Wilson is injured. I don't know if David got a report on how long he'll be out. But Luke Wilson, the injured player, uh, a couple plays ago, that's going to bring up a third and three. They don't expect Wilson to return. Dislocated shoulder. We won't see him for the rest of the game here. And that plays a role because Wilson is a valuable weapon into the Seattle offense in the passing game, and he's solid on sealing the edge from a blocking perspective. Jimmy Turpler, it says, is knocking on Michigan receivers, but if you guys remember Mario Manningham and that catch on the sideline from Eli Manning, I have to disagree that they drop everything. There's a big run up the middle. Proslice spins when he didn't need to. He might have been able to take it all the way, and he spins himself down into the ground and misses a big play there, but it is a first down. First and 10 from the Arizona 45. And now Arizona gets put on their heels defensively. They don't know what to expect because now Seattle can really open up the playbook. Play action. Shots downfield. They can run it some more. They can throw it underneath. Arizona has got to figure out a way to throw off this offensive rhythm that Seattle has going for them right now. Seattle definitely has the rhythm. They're mixing it up. They're going to take it handed off the walls, but he gets stuffed in the backfield. Dion Buchanan comes through and says, I got your runs, and he drives them into the ground. Second and 11 coming up for Seattle. In one stopped run play like that, now I know Seattle has had a couple of them that looked like that, but clearly they can't be discouraged with some of the obvious success that they have had. Arizona, they've seemingly been able to have mixed results, bottling it up and shutting it down. Now... They're in a second and a long situation, which they'd like to be in. Wilson rolling out to his left. Fires on the comeback, and it is complete as Doug Baldwin comes down. Why are they haven't been targeting Doug Baldwin more? I don't know. But they find him on the comeback route and on the play action rollout. He makes the grab his third of the game. And he comes down with the catch. So that's first and 10 down to the Arizona 31-yard line. And Seattle's matching the Arizona drive from one series ago. Arizona finally puts together a big drive, moves all the way down the field, gets a touchdown. It seems to light a fire under Seattle as they got something going here. First and 10 from the 31, turns around, hands it off to McKissick, and he runs into a wall of Arizona defenders as he goes down. Dion Buchanan there again. And one of the things that Arizona has made a solid adjustment on from the previous time that these two teams met is now that they have... They've moved their rookie corner off of Doug Baldwin. They've put Patrick Peterson on him, matching those two together. That makes it a little bit harder for Doug Baldwin to get separation against a very solid veteran corner in Patrick Peterson. Russell Wilson has had to take his shots very selectively in Baldwin's direction. Good point about Peterson being matched up on Baldwin, but he has been getting the better of the matchups when they have looked his way. Second and eight, 3.20 to go here in the third quarter. Wilson dropping back pass, steps up in the pocket, fires it over the middle, and he misses him again. Wilson had him wide open on the post run over the middle and sails it deep. Tyra, or Tyler Lockett is shaking his head and waving his arms like, what are you doing, Russ? They had it. And Wilson not able to connect. So third and eight coming up here from the Arizona 29. Wilson just every time it looks like he's got something going, either he gets a drop pass or he sails it wide. Look for Doug Baldwin here in the slot to the left. Wilson plenty of time. He drops back. Fires it in the double coverage. This could be danger and it falls incomplete. Tyron Matthew, the honey badger, was over there. Could not get his hands on it. And they're going to have to settle for a field goal. And Russell Wilson had a lane where he could have taken off to the left. Let's go back to that pass to Tyler Lockett, though. That pass that sailed through, 
the number on that flight was six because that's the amount of points that went sailing through the back of the end zone they couldn't come up with. And they can't come up with the field goal as they miss it left. These long field goals are not going in for the Seahawks as they miss another one. Another scoring opportunity goes by the wayside and Arizona holds on to their four-point lead. 3 of 4 to go here in the third. And at this point, play ball security and ball control. Do not turn the ball over if you're Arizona because Seattle is in prime position that a turnover sets them up nicely for another opportunity at the at point. There's a came up from Ward. He has nowhere to go as he's wrestled down by Cliff Avery, among the others. Blair Walsh, the former Minnesota kicker, is the kicker of Seattle. If you guys remember in that playoff game in Seattle, Blair Walsh missed the game when he field the goal that could have advanced the Vikings on in the, I believe it was the, into the divisional round. He missed it. This is a big pressure game in Seattle in the rain, and it looks like Blair Walsh is having flashbacks of that playoff game, which was in a very cold and snowy game. This one in a cold and rainy game. Walsh definitely not the guy you want out there, apparently, in bad weather in big games. So second and ten here for Blaine Gabbard in this Arizona offense. Got a 7-3 lead. They're going to throw the screen pass out to Larry Fitzgerald. He's got nowhere to go as Jabal Sh or Sheard, not Jabal Sheard, Sheard comes up with the play. I'll look up his first name on David Comments. Well, in Fitzgerald there on that screen pass, instead of coming back inside where there was a blocking lane for him to run, he instead tries to go outside, and that leads to the short yardage play. He Fitzgerald, if he comes back to the inside where his blockers are, he picks up five, six, maybe even the first down. That was the Sean Sheet out of Portland State. I apologize for getting the name wrong. These guys from these small colleges, I just struggle with, and that's my bad. It should be more professional. And Blaine Gabbert struggling with the pass there as he throws that one into the dirt. Five for ten for 44 yards. But he's winning seven to three, and Arizona's going to have to punt. You talk about looking professional. Blaine Gabbert, to this point, has not looked like a professional quarterback. And Seattle's kicker, he has not looked like a professional NFL kicker. You think they take a chance on Roberto Aguayo? Oh, I don't think they I mean, they might as well go back and pick up Martin Gramatica if they're going to do that. So first and ten, and Asa Chastain. I, I want to say it's Ace Sizzle, but I'm not 100%. You've got Big Nasty Turtle, Asa Chastain. Like, I can't keep up with all your names. Uh, they're checking in in the channel. Also, I want to definitely give shout shout out to everybody. Correct me if I'm wrong. Pack says he's drunk, or oh, maybe DSP's drunk. Try to keep up with the chat. Try to keep up with the game. A lot is going on in a seven to three game. Yeah, chat, gameplay, everything going crazy out here. We're trying to keep up with it. Trying to do the best to relay all the information for those of you that aren't watching the game. Just listening to it. Hope you guys are at least catching up. What's going on? It almost picked off in the flat. He had him. They read the screen. Had it right there. They had it picked off, and he can't come up with it. What a missed opportunity there as the interception is dropped and everybody on the Arizona sideline is shaking their head. And that's six points if he can come down with that because of the nature of that screen pass. Nobody was around him. He picks that, and he takes it the other way, and Arizona then is up 14-3. to Instead, they're left with their four-point lead. I can't tell who dropped that. It looked like it was number 14, but they don't have a number 14 in the roster. They also don't have a 24 or a 34. So I have no idea who that was that dropped it. I apologize for that. But whoever it was, uh, they are definitely hanging their heads because that was six going the other way. Second and ten here for Russell Wilson. He drops back. He's going to take another shot deep in the double coverage. And that one is incomplete. But Patrick Peterson is going to get flagged with the defensive pass or interference. Actually, it's Tyvon Branch. That gets called with a P.I. and another shot deep. And Arizona gets flagged with another P.I. And Seattle's offense is getting bailed out here, making bad decisions and bad throws. And the refs are bailing them out. Kind of reminds me of that game in Seattle a few years ago when they had the replacement refs against Green Bay where they were making bad calls. Here again, Seattle getting the benefit of bad calls. And Arizona has got their backs up against the wall on their own 10-yard line. Well, first, Marcus Colden, he drops the interception. And now, Seattle gets another lucky break by being given prime real estate within the red zone, an opportunity to go up by three. Thomas Rawls with the handoff, runs in the traffic, but he's able to get down to about the five-yard line. And they're calling down at the sixth, so a four-yard run. 
Robert and Kabe M K I M B B B whatever Robert N K E you know the guy from Old Miss I know who he is I just can't say his name for some reason right now second and goal seven to three Arizona leads we're almost at the end of the third quarter it's cold and rainy guys are playing very poorly overall we're doing kind of we've got a kind of a shaky job going in the booth Lisa and Mike I apologize maybe I had something to drink before I don't know second and goal 50 seconds to go and they're gonna turn around hand it off Eddie Lacy tries to break the tackle nowhere to go and he's taken down there for no gain that's gonna bring up a third and goal from the seven and if I'm Arizona I just drop back into a zone and say hey Russ we dare you to throw it to us and at this point Seattle can't be too disappointed because if nothing else, you're making it a one-point game, and then at that point, another field goal could seal the deal. This defense has done admirably well for Seattle. Arizona's been only held to seven, and that came off some lucky plays of their own. I, I'd be okay with three points here if I'm Seattle. Burns says it's Robert Kimbiche. Uh, I don't know if I buy it, but we'll believe what he says. That handoff goes up the middle. CJ Procise. Not able to go anywhere. For some reason, Seattle's happy with a field goal here. And they're going to be down one. Assuming Blair Welsh can even hit it. As we go down in the fourth quarter, I know, a questionable play call to me. Did you like that play call there? Not really. And the thing that I would have tried to do if I'm in that point is go to the perimeter. Either a toss play, stretch play, a slant route, anything that would get your perimeter options available instead you try to hammer it up the middle from you know a few yards out that's not the type of play call that's going to give you six points so here we start the fourth quarter arizona leads seven to three over the seahawks here from CenturyLink field in seattle washington i'm your play-by-play -play host mike peters along with david roy hope you guys are enjoying the game this game is for the NFC West division crown. The winner will take the crown, get the number three seed in the NFC. The loser will get the number five seed. So it is big as they can get a home, they can get a home playoff game. There's a pass out to the left and it's caught. Finally a touchdown as they go back to Doug Baldwin, the veteran. He makes the catch in the end zone on the out route and the first touchdown of the game for Seattle. And it looks like they're going to take a 10-7 lead here early in the fourth quarter. And Baldwin wins the matchup against Patrick Peterson there once again, and that is exactly what Seattle needed. Now the pressure goes back to the other side. Blaine Gabbert is now oh, going to have to step up. He's, he missed the extra point. I'm sorry to cut you off, David, but Blair Walsh cannot get a kick straight. He is totally rattled. He's missed two field goals. Now he missed an extra point. That is big because now a field goal for Arizona takes the lead. Blair Walsh is completely rattled in this game, and that's big not only for Seattle for the rest of this game, but heading into the playoffs, having a kicker that can't make a kick, that's got to be very concerning. The thing that they have going for them, though, is that Arizona's only come up with seven points, and for the most part, Blaine Gabbert has been left ineffective and now Gabbard is going to have to take charge and lead this team down the field for six. David Johnson trying to take that outside, and Michael Bennett says, no, sir, and he wrestles him down for a three-yard loss. So if I'm Arizona here, they go to the run, which is probably what I would do also. If I'm Arizona, I'm trying to put together one of those, like, 15-play, 10-minute drives, try to score with you know, move your way down the field and score with as much time as possible. But, of course, that is easier said than done. They've had, I think, seven drives now, and they've had one that's gone across the 50-yard line. So we'll see what happens here. Second and 13, definitely not where they want to be. Gabbert's going to throw over the right. That one's almost picked off. Richard Sherman drops it. He had it for six. Both teams have dropped easy pick sixes now, and Sherman's looking around like, what just happened? And Blaine Gabbert had Larry Fitzgerald come open on the slant route. All he has to do is put it in there, and that's a first down, if not a little bit more. Instead, he makes the questionable decision to go to the flat route where it's easy for Richard Sherman to just jump that route. Third and 13 now, and Arizona's got to figure something out. That is not like a veteran Pro Bowl quarterback for the Seahawks. Gabbert got plenty of time here, though. He rolls always ready. He's got nobody open. He's not going to be able to get a first down. He turns around, fires it over to Williams, who makes the grab, but nowhere to go. And Arizona's going to have to punt, so Seattle's going to hold on to that two-point lead. 
And in that situation, I don't like Gambit rolling out. He had a lane where he could have stepped up over to the left, bought himself a little bit more time. Maybe somebody comes open. If nothing else, he can still use that lane to take off and run like he did there and maybe pick up something for his effort. Yeah, I thought he was going to pick up a few yards. Either way, I mean, I, I think he threw to a guy that was open. Just didn't wind up working out for him. McKissick trying to put a move on. He almost gets it stripped as they were trying to go for the ball there, but he holds on to it. And Seattle is going to start with great field position, but honestly, it doesn't really matter because they can't make a field goal. The only thing they can get now is touchdowns, as you got to feel that they're 100% not going to make a field goal. Doesn't, I mean, they can't make an extra point. They're not going to make a field goal. Seattle's playing for touchdowns now, or if nothing else, time of possession. And at this point, you know, even if you get into the red zone, and if things stall out, I just take a couple penalties and bring on the punt unit. There's a break on the outside. McKissick takes it outside, puts a juke on, and he is finally wrestled down at the 45-yard line. Big run there by Seattle. I think that's their longest run of the game. And they're across the 50-yard line down to the 44. And Seattle will get a new set of downs. Want to say shout-out to Country Girls stopping by. Thanks for stopping in. We definitely appreciate the support. So big run there by Seattle. That's what they got to do. Can they keep running the ball all the way down the field on Arizona, or are they going to adapt at some point? Well, Arizona was able to stand up this running game down in the red zone and down near the goal line. The thing, though, is is that Seattle now has a lot of options that they can do. Play action, some short underneath throws. They've had a lot of success running the ball. I wouldn't be discouraged enough to not go away from it. Marcus Golden, the man who dropped that easy pick six earlier in the game, comes up with a tackle for loss there. Three-yard loss for the car, or for Seattle, excuse me, and Arizona sitting in good position here with a second and 13, even breakdown, 25 runs, 25 passes for Seattle. They've got a strong formation to the right. Wilson making an adjustment at the line, and he's going to snap it, turns around, hands off Thomas Rawls, trying to go outside and nowhere to go. Dion Buchanan is everywhere tonight. He wrestles him down for no gain. Eight tackles now for Buchanan, who came into the game with 126. He's having an amazing season himself. And in that situation, I understand the play call, but I don't necessarily like it. I would have liked to have seen Seattle maybe go with a little bit of a throw, some type of a slant pass, something short, something quick and easy, just to pick up a few yards. If they make a guy miss, they can pick up a few more. Instead, they go to the run, knowing that Arizona has been effective in stopping that Give or take a few plays here and there. Third and 13 for the Seahawks. Russell Wilson in the shotgun. Bunch trips to the left. And he's got time in the pocket. Looking downfield. Tries to fire it deep. And that one was one-on-one -on -one coverage, not double coverage like he has been doing most of the game. But it falls incomplete once again. And Seattle's going to have to punt. The benefit here is if John Ryan can pin him inside the 20, you're forcing the Arizona Cardinal offense, who has been struggling all game, to make a long return. The one thing you don't want to do is punt it to Patrick Peterson, who is dangerous with the ball in his hand. Ryan's going to send this one, try to kick it out of bounds to the right. That one does get out of bounds. And they are going to mark it down at the eight yard line. So that's where Arizona will take over. 8.17 to go in the game. Arizona trails by two. What do you see? Is this the last offensive possession you think Arizona's going to get? Do they have to do something here? Or what's going to go on, David? I think they need to find a way to put at least three on the board. Now, that being said, they've got to break from some of their norms that they've had so far and find a way to confuse and surprise the Seattle defense in order to pick up some nice, good chunk yardage here and there in order to put together a nice, successful drive and chew away the clock and put more pressure on the Seattle offense, which has really struggled today to put up points. Well, you know, interestingly, their two best drives of the game were the first drive of the game where they got three points, and then their drive right after Arizona scored. So it's almost like they play better with pressure with the lead. They're not doing very good, and there's a run up the middle, but there's a flag, and that one's going to come back as Shipley gets called with the hole. And right when Arizona feels like they got something going, their offensive line kind of kicks them in the pants, and that's going to bring up a second and 12. And this has been the story of Arizona for a lot of this game. They get a nice play, a nice stop defensively. We almost, you know, the near pick six by Marcus Golden, 
The following play, pass interference, sets up beautifully for Seattle. Gabbert throwing from his own end zone and almost throws it at the feet of Earl Thomas, and that was deadly. Earl Thomas, eight picks on the season, and he was close to picking one off there. Third and 12, Gabbert threw that one from his own end zone. you got to pay attention to that with this Seattle pass rush. They are very, very potent. Have 74 sacks on the season going into this game. Now the Arizona offensive line's been doing pretty well, keeping them contained, minus a couple of plays. But you definitely got to watch out here. You got to think they're pinning their ears back with Gabbert throwing from the end zone. So third and 12 here from the six. He takes the handoff, and he's just going to hand it off to Andre Ellington on the draw. And Ellington's only getting two yards. And I guess Arizona is feeling like they were a little risky on that last play. Their defense is playing well. They're going to put the, deep, the game in the defense's hands. They're going to punt it here. It's going to get good position, uh, field position here for Seattle. We'll see what happens. And one of the things that this Arizona defense can't afford to do is create any more penalties going forward. All of Seattle's points have been given to them by Arizona penalties that set up the Seattle offense. Jamie McKissick not able to go very far on the punt return, but he does get it to the 40-yard line of Arizona. So, in a traditional game, you'd have to say 5 or 10 yards. They're in field goal position to extend this lead. But as we talked about, Blair Walsh has missed his last three kicks. He has missed two, in fairness, long field goals, but it apparently rattled him because then he missed an extra point. You've got to think he's not going to be good for a field goal. Here they hand it off to Eddie Lacy. goes up the middle, nowhere to go as he is wrestled down by Kim Dice, and that's going to bring up a second and eight. In Arizona, they almost had the pick six earlier. They've had a couple of interceptions. They need that kind of a play right now in order to reclaim any kind of a lead, to give this offense any kind of a chance going forward. They need to come up with some kind of a turnover on this drive. So you see it, 192 yards offense for Seattle, only 83 for Arizona. Neither offense has been great, but Arizona's has been really, really struggled to get something going. Second and eight here, turn around, hand off Thomas Rawls, and right there, that was a very interesting play as Hassan Reddick looked like he read that perfectly and was right there in the hole, and then he just stopped and gave a few more extra yards there to Rawls, who was able to get it down to a third and two. So third and two here from the 31 coming up. What's Russell Wilson going to do? Well, if I'm Seattle, give it to Eddie Lacy and pound it in from here. From this standpoint, a lot of on these third down situations, Seattle gets himself into some kind of trouble and they got backed up. We saw it earlier, and we've seen Russell Wilson take shots down the field on third and short. Don't do that here. Just make it easy for yourself and get yourself the easy first down. We got McKissick in there. It's more of a speed back. And they are going to pass it. They throw it over the right. He was covered. And it was almost picked off on the sideline. They got it. Brandon Williams comes over with the tip pass. Picks off the pass on the sideline. And just as you say it, Russell Wilson makes the mistake. Throws the interception on the outside. And Arizona's got life once again. I don't know if he got both feet in bounds. It didn't look like it from my standpoint. Maybe you saw something I didn't. Obviously, they're not going to challenge in Arizona. They're not going to look a gift horse in the mouth. I would hurry up and snap it. Finally, they do. They fake the handoff, and this is dangerous as they throw it out to the right. Fitzgerald comes down with it with the catch, and it's a first down, 16-yard gain. I don't know. I, I did not think that was an interception either. I thought he was out of bounds, uh, but the officials didn't look at it. Seattle didn't challenge it. I would have took a timeout to look at it, maybe challenge it, but... Either way, it goes the other way, and now it's all for naught as Arizona's got the ball there across the 50-yard line. Nice play there by Blaine Gabbert, and they are moving. 4.55 to go in this game. They're going to hand it off, or pitch it to Ellington, who goes up the middle, and Bobby Wagner's trying to strip that one out, but he doesn't get the ball free in a four-yard game by Ellington. <laughs> Ellington pats him on the back, says, hell of a try, big guy, but uh, I'm not coughing it up. So nice play there by Ellington. Hold on to the ball. Down to the 43-yard line now. Arizona only needs a field goal, but they also don't want to leave a whole lot of time because as we talked about, Seattle's played better from behind a tie than they have with the lead. And as they turn around here, that off to Teron Ward and nowhere to go as he is hit in the backfield of Sheldon Richardson, the offseason pickup from the Jets, in there with the tackle for loss. And that's going to bring up a third and seven. So 
Third and seven, you need something here. If you get it, do you just kind of play short and try to just conserve the clock, or do you try to go for a touchdown? What's your strategy? If you get the first down at that point, start running out the clock as much as you can, but as you're doing so, keep moving that ball forward. Some run plays, some short passes that are easy for Blaine Gabbert to make. Maybe let him use his legs and roll and run a little bit. That'll help. Gabbert, Gabbert running out to the outside. He gets the first down and he gets on a bounce. Great play there by Gabbard as he looks downfield. Saw coverage. Wasn't super tight, but he saw a huge opening out there on the right. He takes off, runs for the first down, and a big first down. Now they are right on the edge of uh, field goal range there as Phil Dawson's their kicker. He's made a long of 56. Now there is wind. There's rain. I don't know if you want to try a 52-yarder, which is what it would be right now, but they're getting very close. Bill Dawson's been kicking a long time. you got to feel that he's money if they can get him a little close. There's a run by David Johnson. Breaks one tackle. Looks like he's going to get blown up in the backfield by Bobby Wagner. Not able to run him down, but Dorian Johnson gets flagged for the holding. And just Arizona's offensive line cannot keep from making crucial penalties. And that backs him up 10 more yards. It's a great run by that Gabbert, and it gets erased on the penalty. Well, and those are the kind of plays that Gabbert can make that Carson Palmer can't. And that's one of the things that sets the two apart. The other thing that Arizona has going for them is this running game has been effective. Gabbert has been effective outside of the pocket, on the move, making passes downfield. He's got to be able to keep doing that in this game. Clean pocket for Gabbert. Oh, then he shuts the block and he gets in there. Michael Bennett in there with his second sack of the game and Arizona had everything going their way and they are imploding to either one of these teams want to win this game and on that play if I'm Blaine Gabbert and I can see that out of the corner of my eye or I can even feel that or if even my offensive lineman says something to me I'm stepping up and moving to the left and even taking off at this point you have taken a sack and put yourself in really bad field position Second and extremely long. How do you convert here? Second and 31. You have to go for it. You can't play safe. They're going to throw it over. And a catch is made. A nice catch there in traffic as Troy Nicholas, the tight end out of Notre Dame, makes the grab. But it's only a seven-yard pickup, and now they're in a long third and 23. The difference is this is four-down territory. They've got four downs to try to make up 23 yards. But even when you got – or they've got two more downs to make up 24 yards. But even when you got four downs – it's not easy, and they're in uh, they're in a little bit of trouble now. The benefit for them, if they could pick up maybe 12 yards, they could get a first or they could get a field goal attempt off. But uh, they've really put themselves in a bad situation here. We'll see what Gabbert could do. He's in the shotgun, got three wide receivers out to the right. Larry Fitzgerald off to the left. Gabbert making some adjustments, and he's staying in the pocket. Got time now. He's gonna take off a run. He's got time, and he slides down right across the 40. But that's not gonna be enough. As that's going to take us down to the two-minute warning. Man, there's wind and rain here. I don't know if you want to try a 57-yard field goal, which essentially is what this would amount to. You almost have to go for it, but fourth and 15 is such a low percentage play. What do you do here, David? If I'm Arizona, I put together some type of a crossing pattern, something that will design somebody open enough for Blaine Gabbert to put it in there, pick up the first down. At this point, Blaine Gabbert's legs are out of the question. He's not going to run for 15 yards, and Seattle has to know that. If I'm Seattle, play the sticks in deeper, force Blaine Gabbert to throw something underneath, and just come up, make the stop, turn over on downs, and Seattle can just run the clock out for the win. Now, one thing to keep in mind is... Seattle's offense hasn't been able to get much going lately, so they do still have three timeouts as Arizona. Gabbert, plenty of time. He finally scrambles, and he's wrestled down in the backfield. Another sack. Michael Bennett comes up with yet another one. Three sacks in the game for Bennett, and that is going to keep the clock ticking. Actually, it's going to stop the clock because that was fourth down, so a turnover on downs. But the, the bad thing about that there is not only do they not get anything out of it, they lose more yards, and since it's fourth down, they turn the ball over at the 45-yard line, and now Seattle's got good field position. So even if they're able to get a stop, a punt for Seattle pins Arizona really deep, and their offense hasn't been able to do much. So just a terrible overall drive for Arizona. They did everything possible to shoot themselves in the foot. 
As I said earlier, neither team looks like they really want to win this game. We'll see what happens here. Russell Wilson under center. Got J.D. McKissick in the backfield. Strong formation. In and off of McKissick, and he runs into the defender with Nelson, and he's not able to go anywhere. Or Golden, excuse me. Golden trying to rip that ball out of there. They take the their first time out, and that's going to bring up a second and ten. And I want to go back to the play where Gabbert gets sacked. Now, he had a guy who released into the flat. Seattle's defense takes away everything deep, has a guy wide open on the same side to which Blaine Gabbert was scrambling. All he had to do was take the check down and maybe pick up a few yards. Even if he doesn't get the first down, on the turnover on down, Seattle isn't in the field position there are now. They're backed up on their side of the field, and Arizona feels a lot better about where they are defensively. Now, this defense is in a rough spot. Second and 10, handing off to Eddie Lazy, who looked like he had a hole, and it closed quickly. Tyron Matthew in there on the tackle, and that's going to bring up a seven, third and seven, and another timeout taken for Arizona. Now, they only have one timeout left. With as many interceptions as Russell Wilson's thrown and bad decisions, you just run in here, make them use their last timeout, and just let your defense um, leave it in the hands of your defense? I would. I mean, at what point, at this point, you have nothing to lose because you know that Blaine Gabbert won't be effective. And you know the only thing that Arizona really has had going for him is their running game. And at this point, you can't run the ball. Well, there's a run up the middle and taken down was precise. He got close. And I don't know what Arizona was doing. They looked like they were playing off and just had left the middle wide open. Like they weren't, it was like they weren't even expecting the run a little bit. Like I would have at least brought some guys to the line, even if not sending a blitz. And they, they came away with it. They got lucky, but they almost gave up the first down there. But Seattle is going to come out and punt. And I would expect John Ryan's going to pin him down inside the 20. Patrick Peterson's not going to get an opportunity to return this one. And they're going to get the ball back with about a minute 35 to go and no timeouts in an offense that really hasn't been able to generate a whole lot so far. That one's going to go out of bounds. And that one, Ryan got a little bit too greedy. He tried to pin him inside the five instead of just being happy with inside the 20. And that one goes out of bounds in the end zone. And Arizona's going to start off from the 20-yard line. Still not great field position, but a little bit of an error there by the veteran punter. So now Arizona goes to two-minute mode, meaning that they don't really call any run plays. The only runs that you will see is if Blaine Gabbert chooses to take off. Now they have to hurry up and they have to drive down the field into field goal range in a minute and a half with no timeouts. We'll see what he can do. He was able to engineer some drives at Missouri. See if he can channel that. He throws in the coverage and it's picked off. He throws it in the double coverage and it's picked off. Richard Sherman redeems himself for dropping the interception that would have been a pick six. And he takes that one there in man coverage and he picks it off and this game is over. And Gabbert had a guy who was releasing towards the sideline on a similar pattern. The Seattle secondary bails coming over to cover the seam, leaving him unguarded. And all Gabbert had to do was go to his next read over and just deliver it. And it picks up first down and this drive stays alive. Instead, Gabbert tries to force it into a really tight window, double coverage. And now Gabbert has lost his team this game. Yeah, it, for everything that didn't go right for the Arizona offense, Blaine Gabbert, for the most part, played decent. He, like, he didn't make a whole lot of mistakes. He did try to force one in there like that similarly, but almost uh, had the completion. It wasn't as dangerous there. He almost did have the pick in the flat that Sherman dropped. But for the most part, Gabbert was a game manager and did what he wanted to. It was the offensive line causing penalties that did him more. Gabbert made some plays. He wasn't necessarily going to win the game for him but up until that play he also didn't lose the game for him but interesting choice there in the play call and, and trying to I don't know like just watching that play develop I'm like it's double coverage you only need a field goal he tries to force it in there it's a very questionable decision and uh, that's going to be the ball game as Seattle's defense steps up wins them the game Seattle only gets one offensive touchdown they miss two field goals. They miss an extra point. Russell Wilson throws three interceptions. Actually, probably played worse than Blaine Gabbard, if not equal to him. And somehow, Seattle still comes away with the win. I don't know if I'm Seattle. You get the win here. You finish 15-1 and on the season. I don't know if I like 
what I see from my team. Is this just a fluke game in bad weather against the divisional rival, or is this a trend that's going to carry into the playoffs? The thing that Seattle has to figure out now is how do you rectify these mistakes going forward? Offensively, was atrocious. Their kicker should be fired at this point. <laughs> And the biggest thing going forward is Russell Wilson needs to look in a mirror and reflect upon his decision-making. Three interceptions in a playoff atmosphere, you do not come away with a win like this. The only reason Seattle really won this game is because Blaine Gabbert isn't what Arizona needs in a quarterback. And Carson Palmer isn't there. Yeah, you got to so, think. You got to think. Sorry, and I didn't mean to interrupt you, but you got to think if Carson Palmer was healthy, that Arizona wins that game easily. Although that's easy to say, I'm sure the Seattle defense plays a good bit differently, also. But uh, crazy game nonetheless. The last game of the season, Week 17, Seattle comes up with the big win, nine to seven over Arizona, wins the NFC West, so they will get. The possible first round bye, we'll have to see at advance how the tiebreaker is going to go. You got three teams sitting there with. Did they just advance the week? Oh, I thought he clicked uh, advance week. I was like, whoa, what just happened? Um, we do need to advance the week um, as we are coming up on. We got an hour and a half until advance, but uh, we'll have to see. Seattle, Minnesota, and Carolina are all 15-1. and one. They all have the same conference record. Out, well, Carolina and Seattle have the same conference record. Minnesota's locked up the number one seed. Seattle or Carolina will get the number two seed and the first round by. The other team will host a playoff game against Washington in the first round. Arizona will travel to the Giants and play the Giants in the first round of the playoffs. So it will be interesting to see at advance who comes away with that first round by, we can't tell how the tiebreakers are going to work. Might come down to a coin flip. We don't really know. But that is it from Seattle as the Seahawks come away with a 9-7 to win. It was a very ugly game on all sides and a cold, rainy day in Seattle. Not uncommon late in the season in Seattle, but they come away with it. We appreciate everybody tuning in. We see Miggy Ray jumped in late. Everybody else that tuned in, we appreciate you guys being here. It was a close game. It was exciting. We had its moments, even though it wasn't the prettiest of game. But Seattle, again, comes away with a 9-7 win and wins the NFC West. And we'll see who gets the first round by at advance. For David Roy, I'm your play-by-play host, Mike Peters, saying thank you and so long from Seattle. For more, check us out on px1sports.com.